What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 197 of the Nerd Cave Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Derek Diamond, joined along with, as always... Zach Dykes. And Robbie Ross. Before we get into the news this week, today's episode, of course, is brought to you by our friends over at audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash nerdcave. They have over 180,000 titles. How many? From. 180,000. More than that. That's like Gosh. four lifetimes worth of books. It's a lot of books. You've got Mass Effect, Halo, uh, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, autobiographies. I'm still listening to Star Wars Bloodline. Really good stuff. You it, it? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's kind of more meaningful in the grand scheme of things than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Like It has a big impact on the new trilogy. So yeah. again, I- to, uh, to check that out, Go to audibletrial.com slash nerdcave for a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial. Do it. I also finished Mass Effect. Uh, the first one? Very good, isn't Very it? Very good. Saren's a douchebag. I like him. It's my you, kind of bro. You kind of see where you, what, how everything kind yeah. of unfolds. He's kind of my bro. I, I like I'd, I'd go out and you know get some chicken wings with him or something. Have a, have a have a chocolate milk with him while he has a beer. I wouldn't do chocolate milk because then I'd have the poops. You're right. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want the poops. <laughs> Nobody wants the poops. <laughs> so how are things going? Fan freaking tastic. Because I'm Zach Duggs. So there you go. Fair I enough. Had my, had my birthday this week. Happy, Happy birthday. belated birthday. Thank you. Happy twenty third. Yeah, we'll go with that. I uh, got a butt cushion and a back cushion. We all need those. <laughs> so I'm sitting high and fancy over here. You are sitting high and fancy. I don't know where I'm going with that, <laughs> but high and fancy. So yeah, it, it's going well. Uh, my week's been going actually really well, uh, except for my morning class on Friday. Um, I was at Lachlan Tech, which didn't know that they used uh, the story you're about to tell. the the subs uh, there because you know it's a technical school. Well, I was filling in for Mr. Adams, and he's the electrician. So we were stripping copper wire in class, which is where you take, you know, the wire and you run it through this machine, and it like it get, cuts the plastic, so you just peel off the copper wiring. Yeah. And uh, had a few high schoolers in there along with some adults. Well, a kid was wearing a long sleeve shirt, and one of the rules in shop is if you're wearing long sleeves, roll them up. Uh, well, he didn't. And as he was feeding in a wire, it caught, like, a hook was in the wire. It caught a shirt, and he didn't realize it. But it pulled his shirt into the machine, and, like, it was cutting his shirt, and about to cut his arm. And we had to hurry up and hit the shutoff power to kill power to the entire uh, building. So first day at Lachlan Technical Institute, and uh, I had a student almost lose an arm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. But everything you else was you great. You killed a cat the last week. <laughs> <laughs> this almost week, killed a human almost this week. murdered a kid. Moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up the food chain. Yep, yep, yep. <sighs> Next you'll start hunting, man. <laughs> There's a movie about that. I'm going to have to start going before you because I, I can never top your stories. <laughs> 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 But no, it's it's just been a been another week getting geared up for Pensacon, yeah. Which is next week, the, yeah, next week, yeah, February seventeenth through the nineteenth at the Pensacola Bay Center. A um, lot of cool guests have been announced. Uh, Sean Astin was announced today. Rudy, from Rudy, Rudy, Lord of the Rings, it's Goonies. Me, your Sam, that guy, also a Goonie. He's awesome. Yep, also from the Goonies. But we got we got a ton of people. There's John Wesley Shipp from The Flash, Jason David Frank, the original Green Ranger, uh, Henry Winkler, the Fonz is mm-hmm. going to be there. So there's hey. a there's a huge variety. Like it's not just a, a comic or sci-fi yeah. convention. There's something for everybody, and you know we'll be there mingling with the crowd, um, doing a couple of panels, Talking. all that fun stuff. Yeah. When are our panels? So uh, everybody knows. So they're like in line. So there. the podcasting panel is Friday at one thirty in the <coughs> Grand Hotel Ballroom, I think Room B. I love balls rooms. And then the YouTube panel will be Sunday at five fifteen <laughs> in same said room. Nice. 
So we'll be opening the convention and closing the convention with panels. Hey. So you saving. Didn't last end, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just moving past yeah. it. Good yeah. Job. Someone's got to drive this ship. Yeah. Nobody we, drove yes last week. No. <laughs> We were all like filled up on rum, and <laughs> it was it was one of the most fun episodes we've done in a it long was. time. So it was. good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Uh, if you want to get tickets, they're still available at pensacon dot com, and uh, yeah, come check it out. Yeah, and if you see us, come talk to us. Like yeah. we, we love talking. Yeah, we're gonna be doing some awesome stuff. We, we will have be. confetti cannons and glitter bombs and all that good stuff. Not really. Not really. <laughs> I'm gonna break this little. The little string ones. I have those. Potty pop. Sh- party poppers. Pop- yeah. Potty, potty pop- poppers. Party poppers. Potty poppers. You don't want me to potty pop. Superman. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> oh. All right. We so, might get on track. Well, yes. <laughs> uh, let's start the week off right with some news. Um, do do do. Let me go to the right page. Netflix announces Castlevania, the animated series. I added the because when you have the animated series. It sounds even more awesome. It, it adds more prestige, if you will. The first season of, of a Castlevania animated series will be coming to Netflix this year. The streaming service announced today, which was yesterday. As a part of its slate of new premiere date reveals, Netflix also revealed Castlevania Season 1 Part 1 will be arriving this year, though no specific date was revealed. Netflix website lists the series as a four-part season with each episode running approximately 30 minutes. According to Netflix official description of the series, Castlevania will focus on the games, games franchise Belmont clan as it follows the last surviving member of the disgraced Belmont clan trying to save Eastern Europe from extinction at the hands of Vlad Dracula Tepe himself. Um, they go on to say this is very much Castlevania done in the vein of Game of Thrones. Shankar said the project noting the Warner Ellis who wrote the series and is on the board as a producer, added much depth to the material. Dracula's curse uh, followed Trevor Belmont as he fought to stop Dracula from ravaging Europe in the 1400s. Those fighting with him included Alcular, Dracula's son. And he keeps talking and talking and talking. Um, It's interesting that they announced this, but the whole series isn't coming out at one time. Like, it's being released, like... An episode, and yeah. then down the road, another episode. It's Which not... isn't the Netflix MO. Yeah. yeah. It's very strange to me. I think they just like got this signed and everything. We're like, when can you get a, an, an episode, episode out? Yeah. They're like, uh, sometime later this year. With it being a four-parter, I think that that's what they're going to do, is they're going to throw that first episode out and kind of see everybody's reaction to it. Because personally, I've never played a Castlevania game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always heard good things about them. But... Uh, I mean, it looks like it would be something cool, and it, I, I love watching you know game adaptations into movies, even though or TV shows, even though they are hardly ever any good, except for obviously you got Super Mario, loved it, best movie of all time. Done. <laughs> Doom was really good too. I enjoyed that. You know, Robbie, I've I've found I've. I've Prince noticed, of Persia movie? Did you? Uh, I've noticed in the years you always pick the crap of everything. He likes bad things. He does. He's, just, I'm just kidding. I, hate, I don't think I, you, I don't think you have taste. I, I hated those. No, it's, movies. it's documented. You said you love them. It's out there. <laughs> but I was kidding. No, hey. this, you this, like Thor. You like the Thor's wizards. Cool. <laughs> the wi- hey, <laughs> wizards are the hottest team in the NBA right now, dog. Uh, I think they got beat by the Cavs this past week. <laughs> You're not even a Cavs fan. You're a LeBron fan. I don't care. He's Band- on the Cavs right now, isn't bandwagon. he? Bandwagon. <laughs> bandwagon? Sorry, there's something caught in my throat. I think it's yeah. a bandwagon. No, I thought. I think it's... Uh... Never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I was going to say the Polish hammer was caught in your throat. <laughs> ah. Oh. Now, we got a question from the old Facebook over facebook.com slash group slash Nerd Cave Network. Derek Daniel says, thoughts... On the just announced Dark Power Rangers TV series and development on Netflix, and how far would you want them to push the envelope? Are they pushing that envelope? Well, these series are both being made by the same guy. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but Dondo. I think I think they're both potentially very exciting. Yeah, because I I have the philosophy with the video game adaptations. 
we just need one good one yeah. to really, to use a Chris Jericho quote, break the walls down and actually have good adaptations of games. Like, I think yeah. having an animated Castlevania is, is the way to go. And the Power Ranger series is supposed to be the same way. It's supposed to recreate the first three seasons, and it's going to have a much darker tone to it. So I'm excited for both, if they happen. Yeah, uh, I, I'm definitely more excited for the Power Rangers because, you know, I know that market way better than I do Castlevanias. But, um, you know, going into a, a, a darker area of the Power Rangers, I, I didn't want them to do that with this movie. I still wanted the movie that's coming out. It is a little darker than what we're used to. And, you know, I found myself liking it more. And I, pulling away from that movie... Uh, starting a TV show that's going to be, you know, even darker is something that we've all wanted to see because we have all grown up. We are not the the goofy, you know, bulk and skull. You know, yeah. Can you do that one more time for me? We don't. We don't need that anymore. We need uh, to be, you know, more of a an adult thing. It reminded me of. <laughs> would you like some sausages? I'm not trying to. Show oh, I was like, what are you? I was I'm like, trying to pull up a question. Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> Daddy, would you like some sausages? <laughs> no, I'm I'm excited for both. I yeah. think I don't know a lot about the Castlevania story, but it seems like from what I've heard, it could be good. Yeah. And with Power Rangers, I look at it as a what if story. Yeah. You know, if you if you don't like it. Don't watch it. The jump out that window. <laughs> yeah, like the jump out the window. Week, last week. But so, no, I'm I'm excited for both. I, I'm I'm indifferent on Power Rangers. Going to be honest, I can't. I can't uh, you know. Okay. Cool. There's more stuff. It's okay. And hopefully, it's not as cheesy. Hopefully not, because I tried watching the, the original Power Ranger. Loved it as a child, but uh, as an adult, it's cringy. So we got a question. From Nick Caputo. I Thoughts know him. Do you? Yeah. on Batman's new director. And if you haven't heard, everybody, Batman has got a new director. Last week, Ben Affleck was like, Psh, forget this noise. Bye, Felicia. And then he's like, I'm still going to play Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, forget this whole directing thing. Like, I don't want to fully break up. I still want to be friends. With benefits. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I still want to be Batman, <laughs> but I, I don't want to commit to this yeah. all the way. The Batman is going to be helmed by none other. Tim Burton, Tim Burton, Tim Burton, Tim Burton. Joel Schumacher. Oh. Matt Reed. Uh, <laughs> Matt Locke. <laughs> Matt, uh, one of them, Matt Locke. That has like one of the best theme songs. It does. I was talking about it. <laughs> We're going off rails here. I was talking to Amy about it like a week ago. And she was like, well, how do you know any of this? I'm like, I watched this show growing <laughs> up. She's like, that's an old person's show. I'm like, don't you talk about Matt like that way. I love that show. Like, I watched it. Like, my grandfather, we watched mm -hmm. that. Andy Griffith. Like, old man old show. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just jump back into this. Sorry, sorry. Warner Brothers has reportedly found their replacement for Ben Affleck to direct The Batman. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the studio has offered the job to Don of the Planet of the Apes and Cloverfield Helmer, Matt Reeves, who was first linked to the job earlier this week. Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter multiple conversations occurred with the director and the studio meeting Friday. Other directors remain in the wings, including Ridley Scott and Don't Breathe director Fide Alvarez. Although he will no longer direct the film, Affleck remains on board to portray Bruce Wayne and slash Batman. He also a co-wrote co a draft of the script um, with Jeff John. So I think it's pretty interesting. What are your, what are your, take, what are your takes on it? What's interesting about Matt Reeves is he actually came on for Planet of the Apes like they lost their director, so Matt Reeves came in and replaced him. I can't remember who the original director was. So he has experience doing this before, yeah. just kind of stepping into a project that's already in development. I've I've got no issue with it. 
I, for one, I've enjoyed the uh, the Planet of the Apes movies, the mm-hmm. new the remakes and everything like that. Uh, so I'm all for him uh, doing this. I think he's going to do a great job. And like you said, Derek, uh, it is good to have that um, you know experience of of replacing somebody when they've already started filming and you know everything's going on. So I mean. I wish him the best of luck. I think he's gonna be. I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna, it's Batman, so I mean, it, it, it has to be because if they put out a subpar Batman movie, it's not gonna end well. So okay. I, a lot of pressure, but I think the man can handle it. I think so too. Under pressure. I just hope it's good. That's all I care yeah. about. I think it will be. Ant Man <laughs> and the Wasp. Michael Douglas confirms he will return as Dr. Hank Pym. Michael I Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> After Dark version, we'll get there. <laughs> Michael Douglas has confirmed he'll reprise his role as Dr. Hank Pym. <laughs> I Ant do Man declare. And the Wasp. Getting ready to, t- to play Dr. Pym again in Ant Man 2, Douglas wrote on Facebook. Need to start growing that goatee now. And the post, Douglas also revealed the sequel began shooting in July. And it's all perfectly legal. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Very good, sir. Very good. Thank you. I do declare that was one of the best impressions I've ever heard on this show. <laughs> so are you all excited for the new Ant-Man? Ant-Man, the first one kind of snuck up on us. And yeah. we were just kind of like, yeah, it's going to be okay. And they were like, whoa, okay, this is actually pretty interesting. Everybody was thinking that was going to be the first bomb from Marvel Studios. But it was actually really good. It was. It, it 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 um, introduced a new arc in the Marvel universe and like a new dynamic with more comedic, mm-hmm. uh, a more comedic tone. So I think you know bringing Paul Rudd back, who I'm a huge Paul Rudd fan, thought he was great as Scott Lang. Um, it's just another another cog in the the Marvel machine. That's just yeah. Did you guys see the the Infinity War announcement? Yes. Oh man, it was so good. So good. So good. Mm. Now mm. I'm. Mm. Mm. Extremely, or as, you know, super excited, Superman, uh, for for this because I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. Like like Zach said, we all came in thinking that this one was, we know we we had super low expectations, super. and it, it it extremely surprised me. Like I came extremely. in, like <laughs> I'm trying to get away from super because I know you're gonna do that every time I say super, super. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I'm, I'm glad to bring everybody back, Paul Rudd. Uh, you know, when they said that he was going to be in this, you know, I was like, okay, how are they going to fit the comedic in? Because that's all his roles has been everywhere from, you know, slapping the bass to... Slapping the bass. Uh, to everything Slap else he's been in. Like, and, you know, there was times when he was hilarious and there was times when he was serious. And Paul Rudd plays that perfectly. And so I'm excited for this. Um, I'm excited to see Wasp uh, in this adaptation. Don't you mean the Wasp? The Wasp. The Wasp. Nick Caputo asks, thoughts on the Kevin Smith rebooting Jay and Silent Bob, which I think is just a new movie yeah. in the franchise. Um, Kevin Smith announces new in Jay and Silent Bob film via Instagram, revealing he's been working on the script since last month. The film, which is tentatively titled Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, so it's a the title is reboot, reboot, but it's not a reboot of the franchise. We'll follow the two titular main characters as they try to stop Hollywood from rebooting rebooting the Blood Man and Chronic movie. Smith does doesn't have a release date yet, but he's aiming to start shooting sometime this summer. It's a tongue in cheek, silly satire that pokes fun at the movie business recent redo obsession featuring an all-star cast of cameos and familiar faces smith said i hope they get will ferrell back for this and mark hamill oh my god it would be great i I think mark will do it for sure i think so um the filmmaker noted that jane solid bob film comes in place of clerks three which can no longer happen because of the main star's of the main stars opted out of the film. Smith is also trying to make Mallrat series, but hasn't had any luck getting a TV network on board. So, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Do y'all think this is a, a good alternative to getting Mallrats and Clerks Three? Yes, I, I'm disappointed that uh, Clerks Three isn't going to happen. With him saying that it can't because of one of the actors dropping out, he said one of the four leads. So I'm thinking it was either. Jeff Anderson or Brian O'Halloran 
decided that they didn't want to do it because mm. to me it, as long as you have those two you can make, you can make the movie yeah but you can't with just one of them yeah i i would assume it would be anderson overall hollering probably just because he was hesitant in the beginning anyway yeah to even work on the film so but I'll definitely watch it. You know, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back was a, a great movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really fun. They have to bring Mark Hamill back. They have to. Because his appearance was, like, the best part of that whole movie to me. Someone took, um, like, Ray walking up to Luke. Mm-hmm. And, like, he, he turns around and, like, it's it's Jay and Silent Bob. And he turns around and he, like, whips off the room and he's the cock knocker. <laughs> <laughs> and their faces just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would I would totally be okay with the the like, not a remake but the the second adaptation of this movie, because uh, I remember watching it for the first time in sixth grade on accident, uh, back when uh you know back when you had movie galleries and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know my family on Friday nights we would go random uh, a family movie. And oh yeah, that like, was a family. movie. I was like. Cause the cover just looked so fun, and you didn't have no idea that it was. Bad. Did you not check the rating? No, no, no. I was like, No, we're not going to check the rating for like, our child's I was like, safety. I was like, Mom, let's watch this, and she was like, Okay, so we got it, and we get home and we're watching it, and like that's when they start, you know, singing a certain song that is in this movie. If you don't know, it it has a certain cuss word in it, and multiple times in a row. Yeah, and Mom was like, Robbie, what did you pick? I was like. It's like it's fine. We'll just get Several this part. different iterations of said curse word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's it's it wasn't great. But I think they should make it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure. Scarface. Talking about reboots here, is getting a reboot. I used to love that show, by the way. Yeah, you probably watched it when you were in sixth grade, you know. With Silent Bob, you know. Mounds of cocaine. <laughs> was that the alternative? Copious like, after you realized Jay and Silent Bob wasn't family friendly, you're like, oh, we'll just watch reboot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nothing wrong with this one. Uh, Scarface, Coen Brothers have scripted the remake set for, the two, for a 2018 release. Universal's Scarface remake is moving full steam ahead. The Coen brothers, known for their work on critically acclaimed films like The Big Lebowski, Fargo, and No Country for Old Men, have paused the script for the remake. The drama will be produced by Scott Stuber, Ted, Dylan Clark, Planet of the Apes series, and Mark Schmugger, Lucy. We're going to go with that. The producer of the 1983 original, Martin Bregman, is also on board. The film will open in theaters on August 10th, 2018. The film currently doesn't have a director as Anton Fuquay, The Magnificent Seven, has recently dropped out of the project. Um... So, yeah. What, 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 is, what is up with this? Like, why? Why are we doing this? Say hello to my little friend. Like, I don't understand. Why Why do we need to reboot a freaking classic? Because that's what we got to do. We got to throw money at stuff and see if it sticks. And if that money comes back to us like a boomerang made of money. And there's idiots that are going to go watch it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That That's the problem is that, like, if people would vote for their, with their wallet and start showing that these reboots... No, it shouldn't be made. Shouldn't yeah. be made. Then Hollywood would actually start picking up people's original scripts... There's writers out there that are working their butts off oh, yeah. on original scripts, and they're not getting anything because everybody's like, oh, well, we we have this property right here. Let's just reboot it. Everybody loves the original. Let's just reboot it. Let's throw some neon paint on it. Let's hire Jared Leto in here, and he can be weird, and then it'll be all okay. Now, I mean, you got to think of all the – I know we're in the era of uh, everybody's already done this. There's no uh, unique ideas anymore. Uh, a lot of times, especially in movies where you know you have these awesome scripts and 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 these these movies that people are trying to pitch, and you you're turning them down for a uh, Scarface remake, a, this remake, that remake. We we love the classics. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know some of the remakes, some of the reboots have been, I mean, good, and I've enjoyed some of them. But I would rather see a kind of a new idea pop up, like someone who has a, a really good idea, but like Zach says, he can't break through the surface because mm-hmm. there's all this muck of of reboots and everything that, you know, is keeping us from seeing 
Reboots, remakes, really? and sequels. Yeah, I, I mean, let's get some fresh blood and, and let's see what people can produce. Well, and you see that with Stranger Things. Like, you know, Netflix is pretty much killing it. Yeah, they have their Marvel stuff that is, you know, taking from something that's already been established. But that's also stuff that's never been made before into mm -hmm. a show or a movie. Exactly. But you have a show like Stranger Things, which is nothing that we've really ever seen. You know, it goes back to that 80s style and everything. But it's freaking amazing. It's a yeah. good show. But we're getting the same crap just thrown at us. Uh, and I, I said this a long time ago uh, on what was Jeremy's... Um, God, what was that show called? Not News? No, it was like the interview show that he did like a long time ago. Below the Surface? Yes, Below, below the, surface. the Surface. I said... Nostalgia clouds the mind. Like, that is like 100%. And true. Yeah. I know I've fell victim to that several times, but it clouds the mind and it, it doesn't give you what you want, actually. So, yeah. The only positive I'll say is that I like the Coen brothers. I think they're good filmmakers. So, I think they could make a, a good Scarface movie, but I'm with you guys that, you know, why? Exactly. Why remake it? Why? 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 Why shoot? Why? Why shoot? <laughs> why? Oh, so guys, the listeners of the Nerd Cave podcast, I had to put podcast there. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30 day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their services. Um, we, we talked at the beginning of the show all the books that we recommend. Like, if you are an avid reader and you don't have time to read, that's, yeah. that's definitely yes. me. Um, I don't have a lot of time to sit down and actually read books. Um, there's, you know, sci-fi series. There's fantasy series. Uh, Lord of the Rings is on there. Harry Potter has been added on there recently, like within the year. Um, if you're a romance person, there's romance books. Yeah. 50 Autobiographies. Shades, Fifty Shades, Shades of Grey. Darker, baby. Oh, yeah. I got that in my queue. Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> As the narrator. <laughs> It's uh, higher to the man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, I, there's a lot of stuff out there, and all of this is free. Like, this isn't like reaching into your pocket and stealing your money. This is absolutely free. There's no risk to it. After the 30 days, you can cancel, and that audiobook is yours for mm -hmm. life. You're you're in the, in there now, yep. and you get to see what the service is like. I know yeah. when. I originally started. I actually bought my first audiobook on iTunes, and it didn't work as well. Mm -hmm. And they were like super expensive. Uh, Audible, though, like you get a discount. Like yeah. if you buy your audiobooks anywhere else, you're paying like thirty, forty dollars for each audiobook. But on Audible, you're getting them like fourteen dollars. Yeah. The only time it goes up is if you're trying to buy a second book within that month, and then you get it at just about like retail value. Yeah. It. it if you're reading that much, yeah. uh, but you can purchase more credits as well um but definitely check it out it's free of charge for you for a month test it out go into a good cause it's going to your education your yeah. nerd, nerd education yes so to download your free audio book today go to audibletrial.com slash nerd cave again that's audibletrial.com slash nerd cave for your free audio book build it beautiful build a bear oh, i was going with the old Squarespace. Yeah. This is Audible. <laughs>